بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر سٹوڈنٹس ٹو ڈے آور ٹاپک از چیپٹر تھرٹین اسپورٹ اینڈ موومنٹ آف کلاس ٹین اسکیلٹل سسٹم اور اسکیلٹن وٹ از اسکلٹل سسٹم اور اسکیلٹن اسکیلٹل سسٹم کنسٹس آف مسلس اینڈ بونس آل دی بونس ان دی باڈی الانگ ود دی مسلس اٹیچ ٹو دیم ان پارٹیکولر اسکیلٹل مسلس آل دی مسلس وچ آر attached to the bone these two important structures muscles skeletal muscles and bones together make skeletal system skeletal system consists of two main components out of which the largest and most prominent is bones and the other is muscles these two structures muscles and bones make up well articulated articulated means well organized well arranged framework which is called skeleton all the bones in our body together are called skeleton and all bones in our body are attached to some type of skeletal muscles now there is two type there are two types of skeletal system or skeleton skeleton is of two types endoskeleton and uh, exo skeleton endoskeleton as the name shows endo means inside and exo mean outside the type of the skeleton or skeletal system which consists of the bones to the inside of body it is called endoskeleton the skeleton which is present inside the body is called endoskeleton the skeleton of human beings man is endoskeleton and other major vertebrates like lions tigers dog cats birds etc also have endoskeleton now we talk about exoskeleton exoskeleton is uh, like a covering present outside the body the animals which consist of exoskeletons are many also for example insects have exoskeleton insects are special type of arthropods who consist of jointed legs and a covering which functions as an exoskeleton those animals which have exoskeleton they usually 
shed their exoskeleton when the size of animal increases it becomes difficult for the animal to live in the covering of exoskeleton so they periodically remove the old exoskeleton and replace it with the new exoskeleton because they are continuously growing until their growth is complete but as compared to exoskeleton endoskeleton is never shed it is not replaced by a new endoskeleton nevertheless the bones when their growth is complete in endoskeleton if there is any damage due to an accident to the bones bones can replace their lost cell by mitosis but it doesn't mean that there is a new a total new endoskeleton because it is never possible for the animals who consist of endoskeleton now we discuss the rule of skeletal system what is the rule of skeleton or skeletal system in animals skeletal system first of all plays an important role in the support of body skeletal system provides us with support our heart our liver and our lungs are supported by the bones of rib cage our brain is supported by our skull and many viscera including stomach and intestines are supported by vertebral column or backbone so one important function of the skeletal system is the support if we remove the bones the structures which lie or are supported by the bone will fall down and collapse second important function which is a related function to support of skeletal system is protection skeletal system provides protection to major organs our brain is not only supported by the skull but also protected by the skull same is the case with the heart lungs and liver which is which are supported and protected by rib cage so protection is also a major role of skeletal system and the rule under discussion in this chapter of skeletal system is movement skeletal system provides us with movement movement is both general term and uh, also specific movement means moving or changing the place of any part of body or the whole organism when whole organism moves from one place to another it will be called locomotion so 
we may say that our skeletal system helps in movement as well as locomotion movement is a general term describing the change in place of a part of body or change in place of the whole organism but locomotion is always a specific term for change for movement from one place or to another place of a whole organ organism the complete organism goes from one place to another it is locomotion and it is a rule a function of skeletal system there are also many other rules of skeletal system for example skeletal system serve to regulate the minerals in the blood and bones hormones are also produced some hormones are also produced by skeletal system and uh, blood cells are also produced by skeletal system the bones marrow helps in production of the blood cells next our topic will be the components of skeletal system out of which main as described in your book the first one is cartilage cartilage is a connective tissue like bone but it is flexible as compared to the bones it is a clear firm blue white tissue it is a firm means strong blue white and dense connective tissue cartilage consists of special types of the cells called chondro sites chondro means cartilage sites means cells the cells of cartilage are called chondro sites these are specific types of cells which are present in fluid filled spaces of cartilage called lacuna imagine this is a space empty area where nothing is present except fluid like water in the center of this fluid this one is a chondrocyte now there are many fluid filled spaces like this in the matrix of a cartilage means in the structure of the cartilage this is another this another and this another all of these chondrocytes or these spaces are connected with each other by help of special fibers called collagen fibers these fibers collagen fibers are thread like structures made of a particular type of collagen which is common in all parts of skeletal system collagen is a famous protein present in bone muscles and uh, cartilage as well these fibers of cartilage join the chondrocytes with each other and the network of the collagen fibers present in the cartilage is called matrix these are 
डिसार नेटवर्क और कोलेजन फाइबर्स मेक अ मैट्रिक्स मैट्रिक्स मीन्स अ नेटवर्क अ मैश दिस एम्प्टी और फ्लूड फील्ड स्पेसिस दी वर्ड एम्प्टी आई एम यूजिंग बिकॉज देर इज नो मेजर ऑर्गन और देर इज नो मेजर अदर थिंग प्रेजेंट इन दिस स्पेसिस एक्सेप्ट फ्लूड और सेल दीज आर कार्ड लकी This is lacuna. This is lacuna. Lacuna is singular, and many empty spaces together present in the matrix of cartilage are called lacuni. So, to describe briefly, is that cartilage is a connective tissue which consists of chondrocytes present in lacuni and connected by collagen fibers, which make a network. and uh, mesh called matrix now we talk about the types of cartilage there are three types of cartilage described in your book one is elastic cartilage as the name shows elastic cartilage is flexible it allows movement that is why it is present in the parts of body which are flexible elastic cartilage is present in pinna epiglottis and other such flexible parts pinna is the external ear external outer part of ear which we can move touch and some animals can move on their own like donkey it is called pinna epiglottis is a flap of cartilage present on the top of glottis or trachea it continues to shut and open the trachea with the flow of food and air respectively you can also define elastic cartilage as a cartilage which is present in flexible parts of the body like pinna epiglottis etc the second type of the cartilage described in your book is hyaline cartilage this type of cartilage is also elastic like elastic cartilage but its shape is different its shape is nose like that is why hyaline cartilage is present in the parts of body which are nose like means it is present in the nose in the trachea and bronchi and bronchioles and also it is present at the ends of both long bones ends of long bones are guided or helped by made flexible by hyaline cartilage the third type of cartilage described in your book is fibrous cartilage fibrous cartilage is is strong and somewhat tough as compared to hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage it is less or you may say least flexible and it is present in the bones of backbone our backbone or vertebral column consists of 26 bones 
the disc shaped bones like this between these bones is present fibrous cartilage it allows the slight movement of backbone to the front or to the back just a little movement is allowed by fibrous cartilage and this little movement is no less important it, it has much more importance because because of it our backbone can be leaned forward or backward now we will discuss about bone which is another component of skeletal system chapter 13 class 10 biology bone is the hardest tissue present in human body or body of other animals it is hardest connective tissue present in body the cells of the bones are called osteo sites osteo means bone sites mean cell the cells of the cartilage are of one type but the cells of the bone means the osteocytes are of three types bones can regenerate themselves they can remake themselves they are mostly living and one reason for the bone being hard is these three types of the osteocytes also another reason for bones being harder or hardest is the storage of calcium and phosphorus minerals in the bone bones have a matrix embedded with calcium and phosphorus these are the heavy minerals present in the rocks and mountains which also give the bones their hardness cartilage lacks these minerals that is why cartilage is softer as compared to bone but not too much softer so there will be less empty spaces when there is a more calcium and phosphorus stored in the bone when we see at the structure of the bone when we take a bone in our hand the outer part of the bone is hard and it is called compact bone the outer harder bone is called compact bone the inner soft bone is called spongy or also another pronunciation spongy bone inside of the bone is present blood bone marrow and it is soft that is why it is called spongy bone the outer bone has no lacuni as compared to the spongy bone that is why it is called harder bone hardest part of the bone and uh, compact bone assalamu alaikum dear students today i will tell you about axial skeleton axial skeleton means bones which are present in the axis of body and our topic is axial skeleton of human beings as a skeleton of man axis skeleton of man consists of the bones which are present in the axis or center of the body there are total 80 bones in axial skeleton 80 bones are present in axial skeleton and all of these are in the center for example facial bones which make the face are in center skull bones are consisting of skull which is in the center of the body middle ear bones are in center of body 
hyoid bone is in center sternum is in center ribs are in center and vertebral column all of these bones which part the axial skeleton are present in the axis in the center of the body there are total 80 bones in it facial bones which are present in the front of the skull in frontal portion of skull are 14 in number there are 14 facial bones which make our face and at the back side of skull there are total 8 bones both of these collectively make 22 bones of skull the front of skull is called face and its bones 14 and back of it is consisting of 8 bones so total 22 bones in the cranium now middle ear ossicles in the middle part of the ear there are very much small bones which are called ossicles ossicle means small, small bones one ear contains three ossicles and because we have two ears there are total six bones called ossicles middle ear ossicles these six and the, the cranial bones and the facial bones collectively 22 bones make 28 now there is only one hyoid bone hyoid bone is present at the back of tongue to it our tongue is attached it is just one 22 and 6 make 28 now this one added will make 29 sternum is called chest bone the chest bone or also called breast bone is the bone to which all the ribs are attached our ribs are attached to a bone in the center of the chest breast which is called sternum and it is only one when we add this one to the above number it will make 30 now is the turn of the ribs we have 12 ribs in one side of the body and 12 in other side of the body so there are 24 ribs in the chest cavity these 24 and previous 30 will make 64 or sorry our previous bones were 30 and it will, will make 54 bones now comes the vertebral column in the vertebral column there are 26 bones total now when we add this number it will make 80 bones in total 54 and 26 means 80 a total of 80 bones present in exoskeleton when someone asks you what is exoskeleton you may define the exoskeleton is a skeleton which consists of 22 skull bones 6 middle ear ossicles 1 hyoid bone 1 sternum 24 ribs and 26 bones of vertebral column or backbone vertebral column is also called spine or backbone this was our topic allah hafiz assalamu alaikum dear students i will explain today a pendicular skeleton of human beings a pendicular is an adjective derived from a noun called appendix the plural of which is appendices and a pendicular skeleton consists of appendices means the extras means the side bones of the body axial skeleton in contrast consists of the bones which are present in the center but a pendicular skeleton consists of the bones which are not in the center but away from the center there are total 126 bones present in a pendicular 
skeleton and uh, these consist of the arm bone the hand bone the legs bones the bones in the feet the knee bone the bones in the shoulder and the bones in the hip girdle in our arms there are bones total six in number one arm consists of three bones and the second arm consists of three bones so the total number of the bones in both arms is six the upper arm consists of one bone and lower arm consists of two bones hence three bones in one arm and in two arms there are six bones now we talk about in our hands in one hand there are 27 bones and in the other hand there are also 27 bones so in both hands collectively there are 54 bones these 54 and above 6 make 60 bones now we discuss the number of bones in legs in one leg there is there are sorry three bones and in the other bone there in the other leg there is also number three means in the both legs there are six bones one leg consists of three bones other also three this makes a total of six in the upper leg there is present one bone in the lower leg there is present two bones this six when added will make 66 now we talk about feet in one foot there are 26 bones and in another feet foot there are 26 bones so there are total of 52 bones in both feet one foot contains 26 bone and another foot also contain 26 so a total of 52 bones in both feet knee consists of a single bone in one leg and uh, a single bone in another leg so there are total two bones in two knees of two legs one leg contains one knee and one bone and another leg contains one knee hence a single bone this when added to as a aggregate it will make two bones in both knees of the both legs now come the shoulder girdle or you may say the shoulder in the shoulder girdle also called pectoral girdle there are total four bones in one shoulder there are two bones and in another shoulder there are also two bones so it will be equal to four bones in our what in our hip girdle or in our pelvic girdle which has another name for hip girdle there are just two bones one bone in one side of hip and the other bone in the other side of hip then there are total two bones in the hip girdle when we add all of these it will make 126 bones we start from the top six bones in the arms 54 bones in the hands make 60 and six bones in the legs make 66 52 bones in the feet make uh, six we will add now manually 66 and 52 it will make uh, 8 and uh, 118 two bones in the knees will make 120 four bones in the pectoral girdle or shoulder will make it uh, rise up to 124 and two bones in the pelvic girdle or two bones in the hip girdle or in the hip will make a total of 126 bones this is the correct number per part of the appendicular skeleton Allah Hafiz our topic is joints chapter 13 sport and movement 
बायोलॉजी क्लास टेन ज्वाइंट्स इज अ प्लेस इज अ लोकेशन इट इज अ प्लेस और अ लोकेशन इन बॉडी वेर टू बोन्स और मोर देन टू बोन्स मेक अ कॉन्टैक्ट वेर टू और मोर बोन्स मेक अ कॉन्टैक्ट मीन्स ज्वाइंट्स आर दी प्लेसिस और लोकेशंस प्रेजेंट इन दी बॉडी वेर टू और मोर बोन्स आर ज्वाइंड बिकॉज बोन्स आर ज्वाइनिंग इन अ प्लेस डेट इज वाई वी यूज द टर्म ज्वाइंट ज्वाइंट बाय वर्ड लिटरली मीन्स एनी थिंग विच इज ज्वाइनिंग टू अदर थिंग्स ज्वाइंट्स फंक्शन एज अडहेसिव एंड दे हेल्प द बोन्स टू गेट अटैच टू ईच अदर फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज द बोन ऑफ अपर आर्म एंड दीज टू आर द बोन्स ऑफ द lower arms both of the upper bone and the lower two bones are making a contact in this place so this place is a joint now we talk about the types of joints mentioned in your books there are three types of joints described in your book first is fixed joints fixed joints are the joints which are present in the parts of body not moving at all for example in our skull there are 20 two joints because in this skull there are 22 bones each bone is joined to another bone making a fixed joint we cannot pull a part of our skull to the outside this is the proper shape of our skull it is always the shape of skull is always kept like this round in the bones present in the skulls never change their position or direction for example you have never seen a person's skull to be round like this at one time and then having a bulge in the mid of the top at another time because there is no movement here that is why the fixed joint consists of the bones which are not moving these joints the fixed joint do not allow any type of the movement the other type of joints is slightly movable joints slightly means very less to an extent slightly movable joints move very less these joints allow very less movement example of slightly movable joints in our body is between vertebrae in the vertebral column our backbone is called spine or vertebral 
column and in our backbone there are about 26 small disc shaped discoid bones 26 such bones join together to make a single backbone and these bones or the backbone or vertebral column are called vertebrae it is a plural word the singular of whose is vertebra the joints present between the vertebrae are slightly movable joints means these joints allow very less movement you can bend yourself forward or backward because of these slightly movable joints you cannot sudden move your backbone a head or backwards it will result in the breakage of breaking of the backbone the spellings of movable are two you can write m o v a b l e or you can write m o v e a b l e this is american spelling the other types of the joints which allow too much a wide range of the movements in one plane or more than one plane are called movable joints movable joints allow a wide variety of the movements example of movable joints described as types of movable joints in your book are hinge joints and ball and socket joints hinge joints allow movement in one direction only these allow movement in one direction and the movement is to and fro means you can move a part of body backward or forward by hinge joints hinge is a device which is used for a door to get attached to the wall as you can move the door in one direction in forward direction or in backward direction very similarly the hinge joints also move in one plane in one direction to and fro slightly movable joints also make the backbone move a bit forward and a bit a bit backward but hinge joints completely move the structure which they are present in in one direction or the opposite of it in to and fro scheme the example of hinge joints present in your body are your elbow joint and your knee joint you can move your arm at elbow to the front or to the back you can move your leg lower leg back or to the front only in one plane to and fro fashion the elbow joint and knee joint are examples of hinge joints now we talk about ball and socket joints ball and socket joints allow movement in more than one planes in more than one direction in more than one direction in more than one 
प्लेन बॉल एंड सॉकेट ज्वाइंट्स अलो अस्पिन लाइक मूवमेंट यू कैन मूव द पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी वेयर बॉल एंड सॉकेट ज्वाइंट इज प्रेजेंट ऑल अराउंड एग्जाम्पल इज शोल्डर ज्वाइंट एंड हिप ज्वाइंट एट शोल्डर ज्वाइंट यू कैन मूव योर शोल्डर टू दल डायरेक्शन एंड एट हिप ज्वाइंट यू कैन मूव योर लेग टू दल डायरेक्शन द वर्ड बॉल इज यूज फॉर द शेप ऑफ द बोन एंड द सॉकेट इज ऑल्सो यूज फॉर द शेप ऑफ अनदर बोन इन बॉल एंड सॉकेट ज्वाइंट वन बोन इज लाइक अ socket and uh, other bone is like a ball this bone is scapula of shoulder girdle and this bone is humerus of upper arm the top of the humerus is like the shape of a ball and it is fit into the scapula as if scapula is a socket that is why the ball and socket joints are named so they allow a wide range of movements next topic is rule of tendons and ligaments chapter 13 sport and movement biology class 10 rule of tendons and ligaments in sport and movement is very very much important before we discuss their rule we should know that both the tendon and ligament are connective tissue it the tendons are tough connective tissue but as compared to the tendons ligaments are flexible connective tissue being flexible does not mean that ligaments are not strong but ligaments are as strong as tendons are being flexible gives ligaments their role and being tough gives tendons their role both are the being connective tissue our bones are also connective tissue but these are softer as compared to the bones they are hardest connective tissue bones are hardest connective tissue tendons are tough connective tissue and ligaments are flexible connective tissue now we discuss their role tendons have their function to join one bone to another bone means sorry tendons have the function to join one bone to a muscle how do they do so it is like this imagine this is the bone present in our forearm and these two are the bones present in our hand arm our upper arm consists of one bone this called humerus 
and our lower arm consists of two bones called radius and ulna now our muscle is attached here this portion of shoulder girdle or this bone of shoulder girdle is called scapula or spatula here a muscle a tendon is attached with this bone and to this tendon a muscle is attached again the other end of the muscle which is attached to the other bone is attached with the help of tendons you see muscles this muscle is attached to this bone at one end and to this bone at another end only only because of tendons if there are no tendons there will be no attachment of this muscle at both ends so the important function of tendon is to attach a bone to a muscle this bone is attached to this muscle because of tendons and this bone is attached to this muscle because of the tendons in between if we cut the tendons that start of it and at last of it the muscle will not be attached to the bone the function of tendon is not only to attach the muscle with bones but tendons also apply a pulling force when the muscle will contract tendons will pull the part of the bone to which muscle is attached for example if this muscle will contract it will become small it will become short and it will go to that side when this muscle will move to that side these bones which are attached to this end of the muscle will rise up like this your arm will be bent at elbow it will move upward by the contraction of this muscle this muscle is called biceps and this starting part of the muscle which is attached to immobile bone is called origin and this part of the muscle which is attached to movable bone is called insertion when biceps will contract the tendons attached to it will be pulled and arm will be forearm will get rise so tendons not only attach the muscle to the bones but they also help the muscles to make the movements now we discuss about the rule of ligaments the function of ligaments is to attach one bone to another bone because you know bone are the hardest tissue so if the connective tissue which is attaching two bones is not flexible then bones will be locked and there will be no movement resulting so the one rule the one function of ligaments and the most important function of ligaments is attach one bone with another bone and it helps the dislocation of the bones imagine this is one bone of the vertebral column and this is another bone of the vertebral column between these two bones there is present a ligament this ligament 
will allow a slight movement of the vertebrae these small disc shaped bones it will not let one bone to come out of its position imagine this is flexible ligament and this is a single vertebra sitting on it and this is the vertebra below this ligament if vertebra will move to this side it will take this shape this position and it will not get dislocated mean it will not change its position it will be in its right place but if we remove the ligament the vertebra will get locked into the vertebra which is present below and this is called dislocation changing of the location of a bone bang the bone out of order is a consequence of removal or absence of ligaments for example when your eyes keep on blinking the reason for this is a similar effect a similar structure the ligament which is holding the lens or eyeball in place is not working properly dislocation of bones causes too much severe pain and uh, urgent need of setting the bones to their proper position so both the tendons and ligaments play very much important role in our body tendons being tough connective tissue ligaments being flexible connective tissue tendons connect a bone to a muscle and ligaments connect a bone to another bone next topic is muscles and movements chapter 13 sport and movement biology class 10 in human body movement is possible because of muscles and bones if any one is not present movement will not occur if muscles are not present we will be unable to move and if bones are not present we will not move the type of the muscle which are present attached to the bones are skeletal muscles the muscles which are attached to the bones and which help the bones in movement are called skeletal muscles skeletal muscle consist of two ends one end of the skeletal muscle is called origin of skeletal muscle and other end of a skeletal muscle is called insertion there are two parts the starting part is origin and the ending portion of the muscle is insertion origin is the part of the skeletal muscle which is always attached with the immovable bone it is attached with the immovable bone and origin is a uh, part and end of skeletal muscle which is always attached with immovable bone and insertion is the end of the skeletal muscle which is always attached with the movable bone the part 
the end of the muscle which causes movement of the bones is insertion the last part of a skeletal muscle which is attached to a movable bone i mean to say insertion is the main agent for movement origin doesn't allow movement it gives the muscles a support because origin is the part of skeletal muscle attached to a fixed bone and immovable bone i show you diagrammatically imagine this is the upper arm and uh, this is the upper arm bone and this as well as this is the lower arm bone the upper arm bone is fixed in a bone of shoulder girder called scapula this is fixed bone and these two are movable bone there are two muscles one muscle present at the top at the front of this bone and one muscle is present at the back of this upper arm bone the muscle which is present on the front of this upper arm bone called humerus is biceps muscle and the muscle which is present below this humerus upper arm bone at the back of the upper arm bone is called triceps muscle front muscle of the upper arm bone is called biceps and the back muscle of the upper arm bone is called triceps usually muscles the skeletal muscles cause movement when they contract on a command on an order from central nervous system which controls the movement in body in this diagram this is origin of the biceps and this is the origin of the triceps now this is the insertion of biceps and this end of the triceps is its insertion the bones at insertion are movable this and this bone is movable and the bone at the origin of bicep or any muscle is immovable or fixed bone like origin of biceps here is fixed and origin of triceps which is same as the origin of the biceps is also a fixed bone now you see note the difference in the thickness and size of the biceps and triceps in this diagram triceps is broader in size triceps is broader in size triceps is thicker and smaller because in this diagram triceps is under contraction triceps is contracted in this diagram and because of the contraction triceps has become small thick and broad as compared to the biceps which is long and which is thin and which is big 
less broad when one muscle contracts as in this diagram triceps is contracted when a muscle contracts and it causes the straightening of a joint this muscle is called extensor muscle triceps is an extensor muscle why triceps is called extensor muscle because when triceps contracts it causes straightening or extension of the joint at the contraction of triceps our arm gets straight at elbow our arm is not bent in case of the contractions of triceps muscle this phenomenon is called extension and the muscle which causes extension is called extensor muscle in our body there are many extensor muscles out of which triceps is mentioned as an example in your book now we talk about biceps when biceps will contract it will become broad small and thick and uh, triceps will become big thin and less broad or you may say narrow like biceps because biceps is attached at insertion with this bone when biceps will contract triceps will relax and this will cause the pulling of the arm at elbow these bones will raise up to here your arm will be bent by the contraction of biceps and a muscle which on contraction causes bending of the joint is called a flexor muscle so biceps is a flexor muscle because on contraction it bends the joint it bends the arm and uh, it is called flexor because of that triceps is an extensor muscle because on a contraction it causes the straightening of the joint straightening of the arm the phenomenon of straightening of the arm by triceps is called extension that is why triceps is an extensor muscle and the phenomenon of biceps contraction which causes bending of the joint or bending of the arm is called flexion and the muscle which causes flexion is called flexor so biceps is a flexor muscle it is always the norm it is always the case that when biceps or flexor will contract the triceps or extensor will relax and vice versa such an opposite movement of the muscles such an opposite action of the muscles with respect to each other is called antagonism antagonism in english means animosity being enemy to one biceps and triceps or flexor or extensor muscles other flexors or extensor muscles in our body are antagonist to each other because they show antagonism when one muscle is contracting the other is relaxing such a phenomenon in which one thing is happening in one way while the other is happening in another way is called antagonism and such parts of the body which show such type of movements or such type of phenomena are called antagonist biceps and triceps are antagonistic muscles or they are antagonists because they work opposite to each other when biceps will contract the triceps will relax other flexors and extensor muscles like biceps and triceps are also antagonists they work in, in the in antagonistic pair and this phenomenon is called antagonism 
the contraction of one muscle at a time while at the same time the relaxation of another muscle in pair. Our next topic is Disorders of Skeletal System Chapter 13 Sport and Movement Biology Class 10 Disorder means out of order, out of arrangement, derangement of skeletal system. There are two important disorders of skeletal system discussed in your book. One is osteo process and the other is arthritis first we will discuss osteoporosis osteo means bone process means pore formation formation of pores in the bone is called osteoporosis pore means empty spaces this you know pore means an empty space you know bones consist of the minerals of calcium and phosphorus in the disorder of osteoporosis there is little or less calcium and phosphorus in the bones in osteoporosis bones become short of calcium and phosphorus minerals so when there will be no calcium or very much less calcium and phosphorus there will be more pores more empty spaces the pores which were previously filled with calcium and phosphorus now have no or very much less calcium and phosphorus that is why process Osteoporosis is characterized by the lack or too less calcium and phosphorus in the bone. What is the reason of too much less calcium and phosphorus in the bones? There are many causes out of which one is malnutrition. Malnutrition means you are not eating the food which contain calcium and phosphorus. You are eating other foods in more amount and the foods which are necessary which are containing calcium and phosphorus you are not eating those food is called malnutrition. In particular the protein food is absent in your diet and the vitamin C is also absent. The Deficiency of vitamin C and uh, proteins causes loss of calcium and phosphorus. Other reason of the osteoporosis, other cause of the osteoporosis or other cause of the deficiency of calcium and phosphorus in the bones is lack of physical activities when you do not do much physical activities like exercise or hard work your bones become brittle and they may break at any time means 
you may be a patient of osteoporosis due to the lack of the physical activities another reason or cause of osteoporosis is another reason or cause of osteoporosis is lack of a hormone called estrogen you can write o with s directly removing the e between or you can use the e this is britain spelling estrogen is hormone whose function is to store calcium and phosphorus in the bones when your body is not producing estrogen hormone you will not obviously store calcium and phosphorus in your bones you are eating the food containing calcium and phosphorus but you are a patient of osteoporosis the reason is you have very much less estrogen or no estrogen at all that is why the calcium and phosphorus is not being stored into your bones and you are a patient of osteoporosis this hormone is generally produced by men as well as women but when the reproductive cycle of women stops the production of estrogen is also stopped in women because reproductive cycle of men does not stop till the end of life that is why men keep on producing estrogen as compared to the women usually reproductive cycle of the women nowadays stops at age 45 after this age women stop to produce estrogen and there will be no storage of the calcium and phosphorus into the bones of the women and uh, women have more chances to develop osteoporosis after their this old age osteoporosis so more affects old women as compared to the old men because they have less chances of less production of estrogen as compared to women who have deficiency of estrogen after 45 or 40 years of their age now we talk talk about the second type of skeletal disorder arthritis the word arthritis is taken from two words arthro means joint itis means inflammation arthritis is inflammation in joints when joints become swollen they have inflammation in them inflammation means swelling the swelling of the joints is called arthritis in arthritis there is too much pain severe pain there is also fever uh, and lack of movement as well as stiffness of joints it is obvious that when joints will become stiff they will become swollen they will be having an inflammation and when there is stiffness in joints there will be loss of movement which will result in severe pain and fever followed by because arthritis is an inflammation the treatment of arthritis is 
done by using the medicines which are anti inflammatory medicines anti inflammatory medicines are used to reduce or eliminate the inflammation of joints and to avoid severe pain because of arthritis pain killers are used two types of medicines pain killers and anti inflammatory drugs are used as a treatment of arthritis arthritis consists of many types there are usually 100 types of arthritis but in your book we will talk about only three types of arthritis there are three types of arthritis described in your book one is osteo arthritis other is rheumatoid arthritis and still other or third is gout osteoarthritis is an arthritis or type of arthritis in which the cartilage present between bones is removed or the lubricant present between the bones is removed in osteoarthritis the lubricant is removed and or the cartilage is lost the function of cartilage is giving the bones a flexibility for movement when there will be no cartilage bones will be locked into each other and there will be too much difficulty in movement lubricants also do the same function they act like grease and oil to make the movement faster between the bones in the joints so when there will be no lubricant or less lubricant and no cartilage the bones will be locked and there will be no movement in rheumatoid arthritis there is no any removal of lubricant or cartilage but in rheumatoid arthritis the membranes present at joints are inflamed swollen it is due to the removal of sorry it is due to the swelling in membranes at joints like other types of arthritis osteoarthritis mostly affects the weight bearing joints like hip joint and ankle joint and rheumatoid arthritis also affects the weight the heavy parts of body like uh, hip joint and ankle joint because our hips have to carry the weight of all the upper body that is why there are more chances, chances of rheumatoid arthritis to attack at the heavy weight parts of the body osteoarthritis are so similar the main difference is the cause mm-hmm. in osteoarthritis cause is removal of the lubricant 
or the removal of the cartilage but in the rheumatoid arthritis there is no any removal but uh, there is increase in the size of the membranes of joints the third type of the arthritis which is very much common it is due to the accumulation of uric acid accumulation of uric acid when your kidney is not functioning properly uric acid starts to be collected in the body in particular the weight bearing parts and in particular the feet and toes gout is attacked most of the uric acid goes down in the very last parts of the body in the last parts of the leg in the ankle in the feet and in particular the toe the people who are a patient of gout have their foot big have their toe large they are characterized by a big toe or by a big foot the patients of gout which is because of the accumulation of uric acid and it creates a lot of pain as well as loss of movement